We talk about this concept all the time within Imbala, which is, you know, are we, are we delivering to the customer a painkiller or a vitamin? It's about the impact that you can make in terms of solving that customer's pain. So whether it's a utility that needs uh, regulating reserves because they have a hydro plant problem or a wholesale market where there's tremendous value, in which case an energy retailer can deliver that value onto their customer and pay for an asset, we look for those areas of pain um, and then we line up the, the fundamental uh, uh, value stream that we can create for that customer around our platform. Yeah, I think we're in this horizon of, you know, whether you want to call it DR 3.0 or whatever it is, we think of it again as a virtual power plant. And that's the natural progression of us moving away from the, the old school demand response world where it's now a real time, real live operating resource that's coordinated right along with all the other resources. You know, I think that VPPs also become the bridge to how we begin to operate our distribution network. So, so now that we're bringing more and more renewables onto the edge of the system over the long term, meaning solar at somebody's home, well now we need new, new kinds of resources to operate even at the distribution grid level. And VPPs provide the, the vehicle to be able to go do that, what everybody's now calling DERMs, or Distributed Energy Resource Management Systems. That's the bridge. That's the bridge to be able to operate these assets in the distribution network over time as well. To try and bring the, this marriage of the bottom-up distributed energy resource control platform that we, we create through Symphony along with the ADMS or the Advanced Distribution Management System. And, and that's, I think, a, I, I think that's a big gap for utilities today. They see the, the, old, the old school way of operating their distribution management system, very top down, just control the floodgates, so to speak, of how power is flowing through the distribution grid. But as they're getting more and more visibility into these distributed energy assets, they're realizing that they have a, a chasm to cross there in terms of that kind of top-down load flow analysis-based model and bridging to this kind of reactive real-time system. And that's what we're trying to do with ABB. We're actually trying to marry up our technologies, take the best of, of both worlds between the ADMS and the, and the DERMS platforms, bring them together so we can deliver that value to an end customer, or excuse me, to an electric utility. Demand response world, and, and as you're you know I was with Converge for many, many years. And we used, to, we used to say at Converge, you know, demand response is great as long as it looks like an air conditioner, which was true. Uh, because we were largely a company built around load control switch technology. But now we're living in a new world where we have a whole variety of all kinds of different assets. And I think a recognition in the VPP world is you actually want diversity of assets. Because batteries can do things different than loads can do. You know, and different loads can do different things. And on the, on the other side of the coin, you have generation. You know, now we need to include solar, and we need to include traditional behind the meter, say CHP or, or even, even fossil fire generation. The diversity of the network is actually valuable if you can actually harness that value in terms of when and how to dispatch the individual assets. But it does become very, uh, very locational in terms of what types of assets we're getting to, what kind of problem are we trying to solve. You know, storage is, storage is absolutely something that we get asked about uh, probably on a daily basis from our utility customers. I'll be honest, there's, there's places where the economics work and there's places where it doesn't. Um, storage is still an expensive asset. We all believe in the curve, right? We all believe that the curve is coming, is coming down. You know, some say it's following solar, some people say it's following silicon. Um, but as that curve continues to emerge and becomes more clear, I think we'll see much more storage, you know, being asked about. A lot of the projects that we're involved in um, involve behind the meter storage. Usually they're in places like California, uh, obviously, because you have things like the incentive programs that are here that allow us to do that. And then there's other areas where we're doing, you know, grid scale or large, large batteries owned by, owned by utilities directly uh, to, be, to be brought in to the, to the VPP concept.